Today we're trying something new. Not only are we going to try and tune the mass airflow and volumetric efficiency at the same time, we're going to try and use both the narrow bands and the wide band to populate our tune. Stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. And there was a big reason that we put the disclaimer on this video. We haven't used it in a while because we've been doing a lot of small things that aren't really that critical, but this is a truly new untested way of tuning that we're gonna test out on the old Z06. And the idea behind it is that we have dynamic airflow, which is our final airflow calculation. I did a video on that that I'll post up in the corner. Go back and watch that if you haven't. It will help to understand kind of what's going on with mass airflow and volumetric efficiency and how the two work together. Well, on the late, later generation platforms, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that some of the early generation platforms have this parameter, but we have flow factor, which I believe, I've not been able to find any information on it, is the factor in between mass airflow and volumetric efficiency. And so I'm looking at a log here and we'll look specifically at flow factor around idle. Uh, we're looking at 4.3, which leads me to believe about 4.3% of the dynamic airflow final calculated value is being pulled from volumetric efficiency. If we go into transient states, like we're getting ready to go wide open throttle here, you'll notice that it spikes up to 32%. We're in transient, now we're relying more on volumetric efficiency. So my thought was, what if I could take our error data and use this to populate two separate graphs, one for the mass airflow sensor whenever it's higher there, and then one for volumetric efficiency whenever we ramp that up. And in fact, you're seeing the volumetric efficiency error graph on the screen right now. And you can see that down low when the number, when the flow factor is lower, it's doing less. Whereas whenever we get into transient states, the numbers are bigger because more of the air is being attributed to volumetric efficiency. This is all theory, mind you. But I took it one step further. I said, instead of just running off the mass airflow sensor or off the wideband whenever we're in open loop, what if we leave it in closed loop and use our fuel trims along with our wideband in order to get our error output? The reason behind that being that whenever our narrow bands are operational, you should watch your wideband. It's usually very close, very small error percentage. And if we take that small error percentage and add it to the amount of error that's being calculated on the short-term and long-term fuel trims, we should have a total error percentage. Then whenever we go into open loop and the narrow bands are turned off, then we're relying on the wide band. And so all of that error is still there essentially. And so what we end up getting is some custom math. And I'm gonna open this up and it basically looks the same in between the two, but we have a math flow factor and a VE flow factor. And initially we have our math up top that is just going to be our EQ error ratio plus our wide band, our, our narrow band, short term and long term fuel trims. Then we are taking the flow factor, which is this 2376. We're subtracting it from 100 in this case because we take 100, we subtract the 32, we get the 70, you know, or the 68. And so that 68 is what we're attributing to the mass airflow sensor and then we multiply it by 0.01 to turn it into a percentage aka 78% or 68% in this case so we take our error that we've calculated off of our wideband and fuel trims multiply it by that 68% to get 68% of the error is in the mass airflow and then vice versa on the VE we do the same thing except at the end we take the actual flow factor number right there and just multiply it by 0 0.01 to get that percentage. In this case, it would be 32% of the error is attributed to the volumetric efficiency table. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and open up the tune that is on the Z06. We're gonna make edits to these tables and I need to double check the scaling on the volumetric efficiency to make sure it's set up for two bar. And we're gonna kind of do a quick adjustment to it 
and then we'll load it up. The big thing that we want to do whenever we get it loaded up though is make sure and reset our fuel trims before we start logging because we use those short-term and long-term fuel trims to calculate our error ratio. So here is our most recent variation of our tune. Let's go ahead, open it up, and we'll go into our mass airflow for starters. Oh, I love it when things get all out of whack. There we go. And we're not changing anything else. We've uh, set a filter up on accelerator pedal to make sure that our accelerator pedal is over like, say, 5% to disable DFCO. Uh, and then other than that, we're leaving closed loop enable. All, everything else is exactly how this car came from the factory. And we're seeing if this is a viable way of making these adjustments. Looking at our scaling, we're 0, 1200, 1271. Let's verify our mass airflow. It is different, so I'm gonna go ahead and update my scaling to match this graph. We will go to our column axis and copy our labels. Go over to our flow factor, math, and update these. And it'll generate a new graph for us. And here is our new air graph. You can see we're running lean. We have a cold air intake and we put the mid pipes on, the catalyst mid pipes, so that's to be expected. So let's copy this in and we'll do our typical pay special multiply by half. Not a huge shift on there, but you can see that we are getting a little bit of differentiation up top. So we'll go ahead and fix that manually, verify that it happens right at the very top end here. And we'll bring these up 1.01 .01 until they fall in line. Perfect. Okay, we'll do the same thing for volumetric efficiency. And this is set up for a one bar, which we know is not the case. Let's go ahead and edit this out to a two bar, which is my guess is where the zones are set up on this one. We'll verify our zone numbers. We're getting down to 29. We're good to go there. And then we will also double check to make sure our scaling is correct. We're at 10 to 199. So we're looking at a 10, 13, 16. Make sure our two bar, 10, 13, 16, that matches up. And then we're at 200 on the RPMs 468. And so 468, we'll go ahead and copy this. And we're just gonna apply this and I'm not gonna do any smoothing or interpolation or anything like that. We're gonna keep this as simple as possible, calculate it, and then we'll do our copy and paste over to our switch open, as we always do. And now we will save this as Z06 uh, flow ratio one. We're gonna load it in. I'm gonna run out real quick, get a data log after I clear the uh, fuel trims on this, and then we'll compare it to our previous one to see whether or not we made corrections, whether or not they fell in line and our errors are closer. Stick around. Okay, we're back. We're looking at the data. I haven't even looked at the data myself, so I have no clue what it's going to look like. We're going to look, let's go out towards the end here. How about 4375? This is our old log, and we'll pull this one over. 4437, sorry, I misread. So, 4437, new changes versus the old changes. Very interesting. Uh, let's go even higher here, and let's look at 5100 and up. Wow. Okay, so the mass airflow, we did a multiply by half, and that's about exactly what it fixed on that which right now we're in closed loop. So this is out of power enrichment. This is using both the short-term fuel trims and the long-term fuel trims. Let's look at our error ratio on our VE tables and see if they changed any. Okay, wow. Wow, I don't know. The data is kind of speaking for itself right now where we're getting up to 5% uh, lean up top and now we're at like one and a half to 2%. So what do you guys think? I think this may actually work. Now, granted, there is some erroneous data down low, specifically on the mass airflow sensor that you're gonna wanna be aware of. If you look at this stuff down here, this isn't gonna be real. That's stuff that you're gonna have to filter out to make sure that you're uh, getting good data, things like that. 
So, and we copy that over, that may be something to pay attention to where this may work better if we go ahead and turn DFCO off and leave everything on. I don't know. I tell you what I'm going to do though. I'm going to go out to the forums. Yes, we've got forums now. Go to GoatRopeGarage.com and up in the menu bar you can see forums. Sign up for the forums and in the general, I'm going to put the math there so you can test this out. And I want you to post over there at the forums whether or not this seems to work for you. You'll have to build your own graphs and things like that. And as I said, it's going to be critical that you have the flow factor parameter in order for this to work. If it doesn't have that flow factor parameter to split the flows, I don't, it's just not going to work. You know, you're going to be calculating the same error for both and you're going to end up skewing your math or your VE table off. But as long as that flow factor is in there, it is splitting the error ratio in two. I can't promise you that this is the correct way to do it. It may be inverse, but based on the data from the very first log and changes that we made, this is very, very promising. Also, do me a favor over on the forums, if your ECU has flow factor, post what ECU that you're tuning on so we can kind of get a list of where this may possibly work. I'm going to keep on exploring this opportunity, this possibility. This may be the new easy way to tune these Gen 5s and hopefully Gen 4s. It'd be awesome if the Gen 4s we were able to do it on there. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if it worked out for you. Uh, this is really interesting stuff. As always, thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.